Hello everybody! We are back of course with another Sunday Fun Day by the... F no, it's the second film in all of Pixar's history that just had numbers in it. Well, no, third, sorry. My brain's a little dead. With Incredibles 2. <laughs> Like it's like the second franchise? No, it's the only film so f it's the third film that Pixar has done that had a number in its title and it was a sequel. Finding Dory did not have a number. Uh Monsters University, a sequel prequel. Yeah. Uh Toy Story Two was the first one. Then there was Cars Two. And I guess technically it includes Cars Three, but we're just going by sequels. Was that be it? Still, it's technically a sequel to the sequel. I'm getting off track really quickly. We're gonna like talk really about, hard with semantics. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about Incredibles two, but first, before we talk about Incredibles two, we have to talk about, of course, the short film that came before it. Uh, Bao, I think is how it's pronounced. Bao. It's of course a play on the Japanese. Like, was was it Japanese or was it Chinese? I think it was Japanese. I Come here, my wonderful phone. You're going to help me. <laughs> but those who are wondering, it pretty much it's like dumplings. I might be, that's part of the reason why I think it actually might be um, Chinese. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I don't care. I just, <laughs> I just want to know what it is. Oh, sorry, I'm finding 4,000 <laughs> articles about the fucking thing. And like, I just want to know what that word means. Just to real quickly talk about that short film. It's weird. God. I know what they were trying to say with it, but mm -hmm. they, they could have picked a better way to get that message across. Yeah, in all essence, those who are wondering, this lady... I don't know, her sex seemed to be kind of ambiguous, but I had to woman. assume it was a woman. She creates a meal, and at one point she's getting to the final dumpling, or whatever it is, meat pocket. and It, it starts crying like a baby. Yeah, in her mouth, which is first off kind of absurdly strange. It's like, ah, oh, so I'm yeah, flashbacks. Yeah, yeah, it's like she spits it out, and it grows uh, arms and legs, and becomes like this little dumpling baby. It's like, yeah. And then you can see it's life when it decides to become um, edgier slowly but surely. And, and then it goes to marry the hot, you know, American devil. Ooh. And then oh, things I, I know happen. I you're just making a joke, but it's not really about the fact that she's white. She's blonde, too. She's American, in all sense. She's an American devil. And the lady eats it. And then this is, all of this is an allegory towards a mother losing her son to an American devil. No, know, just like... It's son moving on. I know, I'm, I'm being funny. Ha, ha, ha. Joke, you're joke, you're joke. trying to be, but you're not. I'm sorry to tell you. Ben. They just, I'm sorry, it's, just, it's noticeable. It's like, okay, she's, he's marrying an obviously white person because... The Asian people, even though they have, you know, similar skin tone, I'm just going to put they have very, very slanty eyes. <laughs> it's uh, really, really obvious. Like, oh, okay, so the other lady who's blonde, she's a white person. Wow. It's, there's a point where I get what the allegory of the story is. First off, the context of it is just it's a little weird yeah it's it's weird thanks to the fact we had sausage party just was it last year that came out or yeah. was it, okay yeah i mean everybody remembers sausage party it was a big deal a lot of people did see it obviously the filmmakers of this probably saw sausage party so that images were conjuring up in my head the whole time i think he was trying to be like oh you know, he's her little dumpling. I know, it's an allegory. Her, her yeah. fragile little dumpling. And I know, it's just simple. As yeah, yeah like, I know what they were going for, but they just... When she eats him, it kind of just breaks my brain. I'm like, 
Are you trying to say she wants to eat her own son? It, is this like a reverse praying mantis thing? I think... I think what they were going for is that in trying to prevent her son from leaving her, she ends up, like, destroying him or something. And... It's more about her own upset upsetness. Uh, pretty much the fact she's saddened by her son leaving. Totally understandable. For this horrible, horrible white devil. I can't help it. If they had just... If the woman had looked similar to all of them, it wouldn't have been any problem. I would have just thought it would have been an artistic choice. That would have been fine. That's the thing that just kept bugging me throughout this. I'm not even this kind of person who gives two shits about race or anything like that. Just the visual representation is the problem here. It would be the exact same thing if you had one big wide-eyed person walk around a bunch of slanty-eyed people it would seem, and the slain eyed people are chasing him down for one reason or another. It would seem a lot insensitive, and not only that, but it would seem like, oh, I kind of don't get what I'm talking about, and I'm going to distract you with this one thing that really kind of does make you go, eh, oh, God, this is kind of comfortable. Just because of the fact that, again, it's... It's just, it's so obvious, because if everybody had had the similar, you know, I hate to keep using the word, it's slanted eyes, you know, they had pretty much just like slits for their eyes, it would have seemed like an artistic choice. I would have likened it to, uh, some animes I know, they use that for just how most people see. Uh, think like Brock from the Pokemon anime and all that. Barely call it an anime. And that you won't call it almond eyes. Yeah, anything like that. It's just, then it would seem, like I said, it would seem like an artistic choice. But with somebody else that is very clearly a white person. Eh, it's weird. It, it's just, and not only that, the whole short, it's something that, it's not meant for kids. Let's just be honest. It's not because of the adult nature of it. Well, Adult nature in a way, but not as we would think. Like, adult nature, we think of, like, sex and everything, but... Or violence. Yeah. But only adults really would know about the moving on of a child from teenagerhood to adulthood. Yeah, only only parents, only adults are going to really get this. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure kids, like, there's some kind of cutesy parts, but... Yeah. It's not as good as the one that was before... Was it Moana? Yeah, the the one about the um, where the guy kept like imagining himself dying. Remember that one? No, no, that one was good though. I do remember that one. Yeah. That one was um, good. I can't remember what it was in front of, but it was the one about the lost and found stuff that gained sentience. And this one like bully, he was kind of like fighting with it. I can't remember it, but. It might not even been Disney, but that one... Honestly, that must have been a movie that you saw without me, like Secret Life of Pets. Or... No, it wasn't from Secret Life of Pets. I remember because I was actually kind of by myself in terms of theater. I do remember there was very few people in it. But no, uh, that one I thought was a lot more powerful of a message for kids and adults simply because losing things. And not only that, but it was... Like, at the end, I kind of was like... <sniffs> no crying. <laughs> this one just... It does not help that I do not have kids. And I get the artist, he wanted to make something, you know, that is probably symbolic of the issues he might have had with his own mother. Because I do know the director of this, he is of Asian descent. Yeah, Chinese or Japanese. Um... Yeah, uh, pretty sure uh, Chinese no more. I look at everything. I think he's Chinese. I was say it might be Chinese. I... But regardless of his actual country of As I they in Americans. Yeah. It's just, I think it's so personal that anybody who de who didn't experience that exactly, it's kind of hollow. That's just the problem. It's like, it's just so, like, we don't have kids. It, well, yeah, we don't have kids, but I was, I don't know, it's like, I was tearing up just a little bit. Yeah, hey, you're I, a big softy, though. And it's like, oh, it's like. I was sitting there a lot going. It was kind of sad, and like I mean, you took kind of a. 
a sausage party. Like I said, there, there were so many flashbacks I was having a sausage party and I was expecting to start having a food orgy happening in front of me. I was... There's just so much of that little short film that just distracted me and made me not think of other things. Yeah, if you're off the road for a little bit, I'm like, the fuck? What, <laughs> what, what am I watching? What did I just watch? What happened? What? I, I'm so confused. How much crack was inside this drink? Yeah, and, it's, and then he gets back to the, like, the main point, and it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's for it's her, yeah, her kid, because he has, like, the little dumpling-looking head. He ain't no fat head. With a little, like, hairdo, just... Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I, I see what y'all were going for, I guess. Um, okay, that... It just, it to me, just, like I said, just lost... It lost too quickly, and it... It's too personal of a story, I think, to the point where too many people I think are going to get, so no offense. Yeah. Nice try, guy. He's also, sorry. You're, yeah, well, you know, a guy in there was like, I turned dark quick. Uh, yeah, Megan Love. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Hunting commentary I could have done without. Yeah, real quick, we're going to touch on this, and we're going to try and leave it out of the actual review of the movie. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, anybody who has kids or babies, yeah. uh, next time drown them in the toilet and quit bringing them in the theater. I, I, don't, I don't know why parents think, like, okay, babies, they're not going to understand what's going on. And... It's like there are issues of like some kids are just like overstimulated with that kind of thing, and it's like we had a bunch of little babies in our theater just crying, and parents would not bother to. We wouldn't take them out. Take them like outside because I guess they were. They like, wouldn't just step on their heads and kill them. They're solve everybody's problems. Yeah, they were just like wanting to just sit there and enjoy the movies. Like, okay, be considerate of others, also be considerate of your fucking kid. It's like it. It's like, it's no one else's responsibility to take care of that kid. It's your responsibility. Fucking be a parent. Yeah, so. Ironically, on Father's Day, nobody wants to be a parent. So, rant over. We'll just leave it at that because, well. Mm -hmm. that's no. All, that's all we're going to say about, about that, about our audience. Yeah. From there, Incredibles 2 stupidly picks off from the first movie. I say stupidly because of a certain issue that begins to crop up throughout the rest of the movie. Those who saw the original Incredibles, first off, remember the fun family dynamic that they had, their really good dialogue they tend to have. Well, guess what? This repeats it. <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's not... Actually, I shouldn't say it repeats, it repeats it. It repeats almost the exact same beats you would expect it to have repeated. Like, you get the... Well, some said the dad going out and... It's just, it's a flop, and it's an Elastigirl girl show. Where Mr. Incredible's story didn't feel like it was a Mr. Incredible story, it felt like an incredible family story. This feels like an Elastigirl story. And let's just say it, Helen Park boring. She's <laughs> really, really boring. Beyond her having superpowers... What is her character? She's a mother. That's all and there is. That's so boring, I guess. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's bad being a mother. Just there's nothing else to her character. Like, is she into anything? Does she have a hobby? Does she secretly kill people on the side? What is there interesting about Helen Parr? That's part of the thing with Mr. Incredible story that at least was different. When we saw him, we said he's going through a midlife crisis. Understandable. We all go through midlife crisis. But on top of that, Helen was trying to deal with the fact that her husband was seemingly having an affair. That's first off, that's really more true to what kids probably see in life, unfortunately. Knowing that it's your kids they are trying to get to deal with stuff. Like Dash trying to find his place in everything because of his powers because they told him like oh you need to hide your powers mind you that is still a major plot point strangely enough that's part of the reason why i say it, just this movie feels very recycled like almost some of the dialogue feels recycled except for ironically enough some of the cursing mm -hmm. there is a fair three i will say amount of curse words strangely enough and i was like 
Huh. There's hell, damn, and one... We're pretty sure a shit got dropped. That was a possible instance of shit. Yeah, it is shoot. But the guy, his enunciation of it is very shit. Which is my... Oh, okay, like, but... you're a fan of mine. I mean, I'm a fan of your shit. Yeah. It's like, it sounds a lot like he's saying shit. It's yeah. Like, did they just swear in a kid's movie? Which I'm just, we're just not used to anymore. And I'm all for it. Just, it was a little, oh, okay. That's the thing. It was one of the few things that snapped me back in the I was movie. Now, now we're getting some of the kid gloves off here. Yeah, because like, at, we did notice we that definitely the one part, it's like, uh, some, it was a damn or it was a hell that was. Well, there was a, we're going to market the hell out of this. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, there was definitely a curse, curse word. And then later, well, I'll be damned. Well, I'll be damned. And it's like instead of all like I'll be darned. Mm-hmm. Or just I'll be, you know, and some cuts off. I mean, it's neutered. And I'm happy that they did feel the at least confident enough to go ahead and go forward and have a very light but still a light amount of cursing. It's like, alright, cool, you are actually you know feeling like that. Our kids are gonna be hearing way worse from us. Damn, poor motherfuckers. <laughs> But where I have my problems beyond, because I was like, oh, that, like I said, the cursing was like, oh, hey, an anime movie actually had cursing that, you know, it's made by the great mouse. When does this ever happen? <laughs> but the rest of this is just, like I said, it's just a repeat of much of what we saw from Incredibles, just with a lot of focus on Elastigirl, but not any forwarding of anybody's character and not even the interesting bits from the first movie. Well, I thought there was a lot of emphasis on Bob, too. He it, barely like, was in this movie. Craig T. Nelson's in it for about 15 minutes. No, I think longer, longer than that, like, him trying to deal with, like, trying to help out the kids and, like, kind of, you know, dealing with this jealousy of his wife, you know, doing such a good job and, like, well, it's like, that could be me. You know, because he... Cause he's not used to the domestic situation as much as she is. Yeah. Because it's kind of a 50s, 60s type setting, and it's kind of... It would be one thing, but again, he's barely in it, it feels like. It does not help most of his dialogue is sleepy, because he's supposed to be tired, because he doesn't get enough sleep, because he's... Because it's like, who keeps track of that? Because Mr. Mom was a thing that was in the, the 80s. Mm -hmm. The movie's 30 years old. Make sure it's over 30 years old. It's like, I, I'm just going to throw it out there to Brad Bird. And I just want you to listen very carefully. Dads are mm -hmm. domestic too. I get that the setting of the actual movie is, you know, yeah. older. Or, you know, or at least the like that, the atmosphere, like that. at least like. Yeah, it's actually supposed to take place like in the 60s, something like that. Yeah. Sort of what kind of Brad Bird and others have talked about. Yeah. But a movie this day and age, unfortunately, we do transplant some, not only modern dialogue, but also modern ideals a lot of time. And giving us that kind of a movie, like, oh, look at the dad not being able to get the kids, or getting, you know, being a dad and being a stay at home dad, it's nothing new. It's There's nothing unique about it. It's. The only uniqueness is the fact that these kids have powers, and even mm -hmm. then, like, Violet barely uses her powers throughout the entire film. Dash, I forgot he was there most of the time. Thank God, because when he was there, he was insufferable. Yeah, the hyper little, like, oh my God! And just, yeah. you know, like, they kind of ramped up the hyperactivity. Yeah, it's like they went to his character, turned him up to 11, but you're like, oh God, I hope he, okay, he went away. Thank God, at least he's running off to another movie to ruin, I guess. And there's Jack Jack, who was, I think it was a. Dork. He was terrible. I was so hated fucking Jack Jack. I thought he was adorable, personally. I but. hate this baby because they devote so much time baby to here. somebody who does not talk. And on top of everything, everything he did wasn't interesting. Mm. It was just cliche baby stuff. Mm. Uh. Cliched, oh, I'm just discovering my powers and random stuff happens. Mm -hmm. He pretty much happened to have powers that were handy for the situation. 
oh, well, we need him to be able to have this power. He's going to have that power now. All right, I swore his powers more meant something along the lines of, hey, you know, like transformed how his body worked because... Yeah, transform into like little devil or transform into fire or like metal. Yeah, that was something that was hinted at in the first movie. And no, now... You did, you did bring up a good point in the theater earlier. It's like, yeah, they did find like, oh, you have powers. Yeah, they kept saying that throughout the, oh, you have powers. So I was like, you knew this from the first movie. This is not news. It's like, did they really take like an ambient and slept for 14 years? Kind of loose and we're in, you know, ambient tweeting. Uh, they could have. <laughs> they probably ambient tweeted this movie how stupid it was. I just, I, oh God. I just don't get it. That constantly keeps getting brought up throughout the entire film. Like, Helen is surprised that Jack Jack has powers. Like, he has powers? You saw him take out Syndrome, and if not, if they were just like, what happening up there? They got a freaking call that said that he had powers. They listened to it, and it said, he has powers. He's doing weird stuff that I never would have guessed. Yeah, from the babysitter saying, it's like, I was like, okay, it's like, yeah, something's going wrong here. Yeah, it's... Ugh. It's infuriating how much this seems to, like, go... Oh, yeah, that first meeting... <laughs> barely happened. Well, and also... Like, they seem to have also forgotten that Edna... She already made a suit for the baby in the first one. Yeah. I mean, she, yeah, she didn't know quite what baby's powers were, but she, like, adapted to all sorts of situations. Not sure what his powers were or what he was going to be doing, like, what situations he'd be in. Yeah, and then she makes another suit for him again. It's like, um, she sure did. Yeah. It happened in the first movie. I mean, like, one thing, if they, like, used uh, the first suit, and it's like, okay, she, well, we need to add some more stuff to it, because, like, turns out he has his other powers, and this suit just ain't doing it. Yeah, or if she learns, like, oh, well, he has powers, and then she had, she adds stuff to it. That would have meant something. But it feels like this it feels like this movie was written probably in chunks and pieces, and some of the pieces were written by people who never saw the first movie. It almost seems like fan service. It's like that one scene we were just talking about. Just, With Edna? Yeah, it just seemed like an excuse to have Edna in there. Probably. Like, like I said, a little bit of fan service. <sighs> And then on top of everything, the villain is so dumb. It's it's the dumbest reason a villain is a villain. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. It's like, oh, it's not going to be this one person they found. It's yes. going to be someone else. Yeah, and then there's even points with that that don't make sense because characters say stuff and it's like, oh, who was that guy? Well, he was a pizza guy. He was just a trap. Helen said five minutes before this villain's going on the villain monologue. Like, oh, I like, well, I think, you know. I think that pizza guy was just a pizza guy. Just nobody pay attention when they're writing the dialogue. Sorry to be so yelly about this, but holy shit. It, it's not even like at the beginning of the movie and then the end of the movie. Then I maybe could sort of understand. Still wouldn't. 100% get it. Like, I don't get the continuity issues here. But it's like, we have s little pieces right near each other in terms of dialogue that contradict each other. It's like, what the hell? And again, it does not help that I think Elastigirl might be deaf. Because even, like, after she fights the screen slaver and... The actual reasoning that the screen slaver is doing stuff is to do stuff to be evil. Mm -hmm. It's turns out it's this one person who their parents got killed and they're like because well, they depended way too much on superheroes. And they depended upon superheroes. Never mind the fact the problem wasn't exactly that. The problem was the guy wanted the superheroes to come. They weren't able to answer. Thanks Shit. to Syndrome. 
Yeah, that is one of the things. Like, Sindro is the reason why. Yeah, like, two of them uh, superheroes are mentioned that they failed to save uh, the dad. Is that... Dad and mom, they killed them both. No, they said the mom died a few months later. Oh, yeah, she died of heartbreak. Yeah, something like that. Um, but, yeah, he tried to contact Gazer Beam and Pyronics or whatever his name was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, two heroes that were killed off. By Syndrome, if you... Yeah, before the events of the first one. Yeah. It's a point to where you have a villain who is invalidated by simple thinking. And unfortunately, I can I can almost get her, like her like she cues kind of giving away her identity here almost. I give it away. It's the tech lady. It's the tech lady that's the friend or the sister of the one guy that you see in trailers. Like we're gonna bring supers back. He's yeah, pretty much uh, fronting. Yeah, she accuses her brother of being childish and of wasn't where she's conflating uh, her parents and superheroes. Like oh. Uh, it's like her parent, his parents got killed because superheroes went away or something. It's like, well, in a way, like she's actually being childish yeah. too because <laughs> she's like just looking for the most simple, straightforward reasoning behind their death. Never mind the fact that it, it's actually against how supposedly her character set up, which is a super smart, yeah. ultra th overthinking person. Maybe you could look at it if she was overthinking the situation, but but that's not what's happening at all. She's just simply thinking yeah. of the one of the two objects that her father tried to use to save them. Never mind the fact that I don't know why they didn't kill the mother or the kids, but you know, let's not start digging apart the entire issues with the plot. Yeah, because he goes downstairs to. Oh, he doesn't go downstairs. He goes in his well, own bedroom. Well, I mean, like, he goes to contact the police and... Or to contact the superheroes and... It's in the same room with his wife. And they just kill him. Hmm. It, it It's asinine, is a nice way to put it. It's like the writers are like, just in there slapping the keys on that board. Like, ah, this is so great. This is the greatest thing ever. I think the phones were actually in his office. But you saw in the... Yeah, like she... Seeing, he got up from the bed and went straight to the phones. Like, he was right there. You could see the bed from the phones. When he was called. We need to have a look at that scene again. No, I do. I do not want to see this again. At least I do. I... Oh, my God. Uh, but, it, anyway. I'm just going to put it this way. It, those who are wondering about the act... Cause like I said, you can already hear just how we're trying to figure out the plot because it's just, it's barely held together. The screen slaver is a shitty, shitty villain because she uses her powers or stuff for shitty, Her technology, shitty which... It's the same thing I have a, as Syndrome. The thing about it is like it's, it's like she's pretty much is Syndrome. Like, you know, she's using technology because she resents... People with superpowers be like, oh, because you're special, but we're not. It's like, but unlike Syndrome, where it's understandable because Syndrome was, you know, cast aside simply because he was seen as a normal kid by his idol, you know. Hmm. And he is a super smart guy. It's like, well, yeah, I'm going to be a little pissed off about that. Well, I think it's more of the fact that, like, he was a little kid. It's like, okay, I'm, it's like, I'm not going to look after you. It's like, just go home and stay safe. Syndrome. Oh, yeah. But what I'm just saying is, like, he doesn't see himself that way. He saw himself as being able to help out Mr. Incredible. And that's the thing. Whenever you get that harsh of a, you know, like, no, you can't because you're a puny, weak, little nothing. Yeah. That's kind of like going behind the scenes and seeing the people in the suits at Disneyland taking off their heads. Fuck with your perception of how reality is. But I'm not so afraid. <laughs> I always say Friday Nights of Rice. Yeah. But yeah, where Syndrome, at least he, he's understandable. You can understand where he's coming from. Sure, it's still a childish mentality in a way, and but again, his childhood. Jason Lee? Uh, yeah, Jason Lee, he did. Yeah, I was like, he was an enjoyable kind of villain. Like, just kind of. He, he was hammy when he needed to be. I was like, he was chewing the scenery and. 
you know, he was dark, you know, a serious threat when he needed to be. Also, here's the thing that they understood with the first movie. There is cliches throughout all comic books, throughout all superhero stories, and it kind of poked at him constantly. Like, him, like, when Mr. Crumble almost kills him by throwing the boulder at him whenever he's monologuing, he's like, you sly dog, you caught me monologuing. He's like, right, yeah. that's really smart. Yeah. And that's actually kind of funny, in fact. Kind of poke fun, it's like, oh, monologue, yeah, it happens every time. Yeah, or like at the point whenever Mr. Crumble is able to grab, uh, what's her name? Uh, the lady who helps out Syndrome, I can't remember her name, Vision or Mirage? I think it's yeah, Mirage. Yeah, Mirage. And he says, oh, crush her, you know. And first off, it's a very dramatic scene. None of that ever exists in the, in the second movie. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a, it's a really good dramatic scene. And I like that Syndrome just calls him out on it. And he's like, dark for you. He's like, go ahead, do it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, do it. Yeah. And I like that that kind of pokes fun. It's, you know, whenever they do, whenever superheroes do do that kind of stuff and they're somehow able to talk a villain out. Or anything like that. So. Well, I like the, the family moments from the first one. The like, especially the husband and wife moments. Like when he thought that um, she and the kids were dead, and she's like, "Like, no, I'm, I'm not strong enough. I can't handle losing you guys again." Yeah, which... whenever he breaks down right before they're about to go fight the uh, big syndrome bot thing. Yeah. And he's like, that part's like, huh? Yeah, it's like it was real. Yeah. Kerbal's two doesn't have any of that. Like, it just feels like, oh, like, there's none of that kind of, like, tension, really. That's another issue that constantly persists throughout this entire movie. It feels like this situation can be solved like that. Yeah. It's, and in fact, it kind of is solved like that, which is way too simple and stupid. And also, somehow, you can have somebody pulled out of a glass window, and they're not, like, just, you know, goo. Hmm. It's like, at least Elastigirl made sense that she was able to do that. Okay, she's a superhero. The normal person that got pulled out of a window, and she's just fine falling to Earth. First off, terminal velocity alone would just kill her, because she went... <laughs> Sorry, science. <sighs> yeah, like, even this final confrontation and all that, since it's solved so simply. And, yeah, I didn't want them to go the exact same... Route, but it would have been nice to see something between Helen and um, Bob. Bob, anything you know that those human moments that there yeah. isn't that it's yeah that, uh, the husband and wife moments. I mean, like what little bit we did get, I will admit, is like wasn't quite enough. It just it yeah just their interaction seemed a little off. Yeah, it felt like two people who haven't seen each other in a while and they're trying to act like they know each other. Yeah. <laughs> Probably what really is happening. Yeah, like him, you know, teasing her and, and like her, like hitting him with her, like, oh, shut up. Mm -hmm. It's like, that was a cute little moment. And I was like, I was like, okay, well, where's the rest of it? Yeah, like, where's the moment, like, after Bob realized, whenever he actually was so angry when Mirage freed him and he's sitting there, he's about to actually kill her simply because he feels like he's had everything actually taken away from him. Yeah. And he realizes last girl's alive and he's so just pulling her to him. She's sitting there just being mad at him and he doesn't care. He he wants to embrace her. Where are those moments in Incredibles <laughs> 2? I don't have these moments of just like a warm, good, happy embrace. Hell, like, at one point, the lady is able to control people through these hypnotic goggle things. It's so stupid. It's like, how do you assume they're going to stay on their head? Especially since it, from the scenes of it, they seem to actually be like glasses. Like, like these kind of glasses. They don't have a backing or anything like that. Yeah, like, all that fine they're doing is, like, nothing comes flying off? Yeah, or, you know, what happens if you go to put it on somebody's eyes and they have their eyes closed? Because... I don't know about y'all, somebody shoving something towards my face, I instinctively close my eyes. And that's pretty much how her powers work. You have to see something. Yeah, I... Like, just even the idea of, like, a contact coming in my eyes, like, even with my own fingers, like, that makes me kind of flinch. Like, 
mm, get away from me. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I don't, I don't wear contacts. I, I can never wear probably. <laughs> but even like how they're, that thing works, it's corny as hell, but you know what? If they could have pulled off the whole thing, it would have been really nice if, like, let's say the kids broke through the whole hypnosis to their parents. Yeah. Or, you know, like, let's say they broke through to Bob because he's been spending the most time, and, you know, it's kind of talking about the fact that Helen's been away from them for, you know, what in the movie it seems like for a bit. Never mind, that's not touched. Upon. It's like she's just away. At least Bob was still coming home every freaking day while he was yeah. doing his thing. He was just working out. He'd still come home and get some mean loving from his elastic wife. <laughs> yeah, she'd be like. Yeah, that seems still just the funniest damn thing ever in the first movie. And like trying to say goodbye, like acting like he's leaving for work, and then mm -hmm. just like. It's like nope, it coming back. <laughs> like her pulling it back in. It's like. Mm-hmm. Probably me. <laughs> but that's which I love her, folks. <laughs> but then they're cute enough, lovey. <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, there is none of that chemistry. There's not a good familyness. Yeah, you talking about that moment from the first one where mm -hmm. he's like, "Well, it's like you're, you're you're mad at me." I was like, "I'm I'm just, I'm just happy. happy you're alive." Yeah, it's like that. Was like it just made things like, yeah. In the second one, it's all about the fact that. You know, he's having to stand by almost helpless while she's, like, going out and pretty much providing for the family and, like, trying to pave the way for their family. Yeah, so that way they wouldn't have to constantly hide. You know, and he's having to learn how to be domestic and it's just... Yeah, he's like, you do bring up a good point. It's like, how, how have we not moved past this? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah like, I know it's in 60 settings, like, okay... To feel like we're still in those stereotypes of, you know, either both parents are working or if one of them is a stay-at-home parent, it's the mom while the guy, you know, goes out and provides financially for his family. Mm -hmm. And, like, all, you know, all the kids, you know, the house and everything is taken care of by the woman. And dad has no idea what the hell's going on, is not involved in anything, just, just come, comes home and parks on in front of the TV or something like that. It's just, it's like... It's old-fashioned mm -hmm. thinking in the most primitive ways. I, I don't even... Like, hell, it was kind of old-fashioned like, a bit like, in... The, like the model up at our work, assume positive intent. It's like, I'm going to... It's like, I would like to assume that's not what they were going for. They were going for, it's like, okay, you know, there's some guys that... They're not quite as involved in rearing a child even nowadays mm -hmm. as the moms are. And so they'll... It's like when comes time for them to do it by themselves, they're like, oh shit, I, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Please help. Yeah. And that would have been fine if we saw something like that, but instead we get Mr. Mom and not even done as well. Hell, at least Mr. Mom has the charm of Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. also, it's still very much set in its time. It's still set very much in the 80s. This Which is still a little bit... You know, bass backwards, even though women have been in the work, workplace for like, I think, 20 some years by that time. Well, uh, by the 80s, it was a bigger revolution. It's part of the reason why Baby Boom was a bit of a thing. And also, at the same time, why Baby Boom was also a complete opposite throw, and it kind mm -hmm. of was a counter, not counter argument, but pretty much it was trying to say, it's like, okay, women can be strong and everything, but it's like, so all we right. Don't, like, we don't necessarily have to give up our careers to. You know, take care of a child. It's like, unfortunately, baby boom says that. It's like, yeah, that's mm. like the baby starts to interfere with her career. So what she do? She quits her job, moves out to the country, and mm -hmm. and it's one of those that it's like, like, there's probably a better message throughout baby boom. I'm not gonna try to talk too much about. Yeah, baby that was boom. on TV last night. That's why we're like it's fresh on our minds. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just one of those that it's like baby boom. Even then, it felt a little old fashioned. Yeah. And mind you, Mr. Mom, Baby Boom, early 80s movies. I want to say Mr. Mom was 83. I want to say Baby Boom was like 84. Yeah, that makes you feel I nice was, and old. I want to say Mr. Mom came out just just a couple years before Batman. No, it came out a couple years before Beetlejuice. 
Or, yeah, Beetlejuice. What? Because Beetlejuice was 87. Um, Batman was 89. Holy crap, that's still on there. Uh, a handy dandy phone here. Handy dandy. Yeah. I'm just. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. I wanted to go into this movie like. I hate it. you sometimes. 83. It's like, yeah, you were closer. I said 83. I can't be closer. I'm on it. I think it's not like. 84. I said 83. I said it was before. Um, Beetlejuice, which was 87, if I'm not mistaken, or 88. Dead and Boom. And Baby Boom was 84, or something like that. Baby Boom. Oh, Baby's right there. Top. Oh, 19. Okay. 87. That was yeah. close. Also, also, the one underneath that is like, that's not right. <laughs> There's a lot of movies called Baby Boom. Yeah. <sighs> but, yeah. It's just, I didn't like this. <laughs> this is not good. Totally can't tell. Well, it does not help the animation. It's never particularly, like, wonderful. None of it's ever bad. Just... And it, not enough Frozone. Yeah. Samuel not, Jackson's in it, and he's good when he's in it, but... Yeah, but they need him to be, like, quipping more. Yeah, his quips were always what helped to make the movie feel very f nice and yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I was like, I loved in the first one. It's like, well, that ain't right. We don't like bad guys. Incompetent bad guys. Incompetent bad guys. Or the... Talking about... Uh, it's like, well, can't you use water in the air? There is no water in the air, Bob. What's your excuse? You're running out of muscle. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I just love Rose. I just love Samuel Jackson. He's so hilarious. It's Samuel like, yeah, need, need more lines for this man in this movie. It's just... Or just make a Frozen movie. I'd prefer that. Wouldn't you? Yeah, it's like they like, made a bigger deal about him in the trailer than he actually is in the movie. Yeah, like what you see in the trailer is pretty much all Frozen in the movie. The, what the? In the, I'll be there ASAP. It's like, you better be coming back ASAP. Which one that's funny is the... The original It's like, I am your wife. wife. I, I am, am the greatest, greatest good that you're ever going to get. He's just like dejected. Like, I'm not winning this argument. Mm hmm. Yeah, like that whole sh little shtick that happened. Yeah, I was like, we, like... Need, we need more Frozone, especially more Frozone and honey. Yeah. <laughs> especially Frozone. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, no. We need more cowbell. Yeah, it needs more cowbell. <laughs> so, what would you give this as a final score? Unless there's more you want to keep talking about, because I wasn't. I. Okay, I actually, I like this movie. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first one. I was going to give it, like, an 8. But the more I'm talking about, I was like, okay, maybe a 7. It's like, okay, no, now I'm thinking more about it. Okay, a good solid 6. 6. Good 6. Uh, I had to give it a low score. I was like, yeah, there are more problems than I originally realize like now we're talking about it. I was like yeah wait yeah I just and that's the other issue I have with this movie just to touch on one last thing mm -hmm. it's not funny like I I think I at like one point and that was it but it did not help for me way too much Jack Jack if you are not one that likes baby films like oh the baby's doing quirky stuff it's mm -hmm. doing funny you're gonna hate this because Jack Jack takes up more than Dash and Violet combined. He yeah, is, it's kind of Jack Jack the movie. Yeah, and it gets really insufferable if you do not have a lot of patience for a kind of annoying baby. I thought he was adorable, personally. Although there are times like, okay, we get it. He can be like a monster when he doesn't get his way, like when his parents are being attacked or something. You know, it's like, okay. We get that. We don't have to constantly show it. Like the scene, the elevator scene in the trailer. Like, oh, hey, look at it. I was like, that was kind of unnecessary. Yeah. It, it was a little cute, but it's like, got a little laugh out of me. A little chuckle, but. I, I just couldn't. It, uh, yeah, it was wholly unnecessary, really. Yeah. And like I said, the old domesticated male, how shall he ever live? That is. I have Lucy type hijinks. Yeah, it's. Like it's we, so dated. We, yeah, it was like we should have moved far beyond this by yeah. now. It's like, all right, if... It should have, and yeah, we still on the side. Still kind of feel that way. That, that's the sad part. Well, it doesn't help that a big chunk of our media does that bullshit. 
you know, like women are still the caregivers and men are still the providers. Like, yep. Well, that's like I always told Megan. It's like if she found her a job she really liked and she made more than enough money for both of us, like, yeah, sure, I'll stay home and take care of kids. I won't mind. Because I can't breastfeed them. <laughs> that's the only difference there. No, we're going to pump some milk for you in the morning. <laughs> Ow, I'll squeeze my own nipple. <laughs> But, yeah, there's that issue. Again, like I've said, Dash is really terrible whenever he's there. Yeah. It doesn't feel like his character goes anywhere except for just being hyperactive, hyperactive. Yeah, like in the first one, at least he was, you know, craving an outlet yeah. for his hyperactivity. And, yeah, that's why uh, they gave him super speeds because, like, he's supposed to be the hyperactive little kid. Mm -hmm. But it's like... And this one, like, he's, like, <laughs> just, like, running around freaking out over any little thing. It just, it, it just didn't add anything except for annoyance throughout it. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, he's just being a typical little hyperactive little kid. Besides Frozone, which I will say, Frozone, when he was on there, he was good. Yeah. Because Samuel Jackson is a god amongst men. I was like, I was like how do you not escape? The other person I will say I actually liked was Violet. I actually liked her little side story you know her trying to get a date and it's a bit kind of gets you know thrown out sure some of the dialogue she says is not the greatest mm -hmm. but i get that i understand the teenage angst i understand you know the issues i wanted it a little bit like more. the parental interference in your love lives like yeah that that i thought was actually kind of charming that that mm -hmm. little bits i wanted more of that Instead, I got the Jack Jack show. Mm -hmm. And sorry, this is a jackhole piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I will give this a two. It gets a two simply because Violet is really good whenever she's given actually you know decent dialogue. That's an issue. Like I kind of already said, I think once, but I'm gonna say again. Writing this movie not good. It's really bad. It's very dated at times. And Frozone's really good. Or now it's like, the movie looks awesome. Except for the awesome. modern swearing. Yeah, the modern swearing. Oh, I'll be damned. We're going to mark the hell out of this. Possible shit. Yeah. Like the shit thing actually did make me laugh. I will say that's the other thing kind of made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> shit. <laughs> exactly how I get when I get too excited. Just, I'll say stuff in the backwards. And it's just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, two. Mm -hmm. You can miss this. The, that is the bad thing. It's like, it's, for me, this is more proof that, is, that Pixar needs to no longer do sequels. I have not seen a good Pixar sequel yet. Sorry, Toy Story 3 sucks. It is so, so not interesting. I don't even remember Toy Story 2 and I watched it. It's like, oh, well, that was I was going to introduce uh, Jesse. Yeah, I, I know what it happened-ish. But I was like, oh, that was a thing. Yeah. Finding Dory was completely forgettable, and it didn't add anything to the movie at all, or series, I guess. Cars 2 and 3 were bleh. What is it? I can't say anything about the Cars movie. I've never seen them. And Monsters University just felt yeah. like such a slap in the face, and also like, hey, kids got dreams. Well, fuck you. Thanks, life. <laughs> so, Pixar, stop doing sequels just stick to singular stories maybe it won't be so terrible then oh uh, but hey we're lucky we get a sequel next week and i gotta show megan jurassic world because next week we get jurassic park 5 lost world redux <laughs> so until then everybody we'll see y'all there so bye bye Bye-bye.